When we finish the, the previous video, um, I just gone over the article on the Battle of Monteperti. One of the things I was trying to do there was to demonstrate to you um, how I would build up my understanding of an article by processing in my head what the article was about as I was reading through it and changing my um, perception of it as more information became available. And that's how you should really read articles. So you try and keep in your mind everything that's taken place so far. One way to do that is just take little brief little notes, sort of bullet points about the, the, the main statements made as you're going through. And then I got to the end and I finished and, I, and if I had been writing the, the seven part summary that um, you do in some of the, the articles, 10 of the articles out of the 25, I would, that would have been it, I'd have finished it. But when you do something like that, you, you're obviously, you're almost certainly going to be doing it in one sitting. You can't really stop halfway through, go away, um, leave it for a couple of days and then go back. Because if you do that with any article, you will forget what's happened, what came before. So you get to the end. And it's like anything else in life. If you only do it once, you're not going to get everything. You're, you're going to misunderstand a few things and there's going to be some gaps in what you what you did. And that's the situation I left it in. Now, if you go through what I said, you will find things that I said that weren't actually 100% correct. There are things that I said that um, I changed as I went through because I realized new things. And what I do when I, when I read something that I think is, is important, I will read it, do this, go through the process I went through with you. Um, you saw what I did with, with the textbook, what is medieval history, where I, I highlighted the text I thought was important. I do all that. And then after a bit of time, I go back and have another look at it. I wouldn't do that if I wasn't going to use that source. So in the case of the Battle of Monteperti, let's assume I was going to do it. So I'd, I'd got my own ideas in my head, but I've been thinking about it since, and let's say that two or three days have gone by. Although typically 24 hours is, is probably just about enough for something that short. I would go back in and I'd start thinking about it again. One of the things that strikes me with this article is the um, is the is the difficulty in actually knowing who Manfredi was. It's not exactly obvious as you're going through it, and you come down to this bit. You get told about King Manfredi the first there, ruling over southern Italy. Um, but who was this person? What, what role was he actually playing? And if you want to understand what's really going on in the paper, it's, it's useful to actually have a bit more information. So we go from uh, the basics that we went through uh, yesterday, where we're just looking at the um, situation as it was presented to us, and remember there were no sources, so there's no other places you could look at. What I do in those circumstances is I do a search on Google. I just I would just do King Manfredi on Google, and I did. And there at the top was a Wikipedia article, so I went into it. And that's where I found out more information about Manfredi. Um, he was, and this adds quite a lot to the story that wasn't told to us, he was a natural son of the Holy Roman Emperor. So he was really quite well connected. That's how he managed to get the, the 800 German troops. So I would, I would start to poke, pick away at the, the items in it, uh, in the article, to see if I could find out more information to just build up my knowledge and have other sources I could, I could rely on. Wikipedia, uh, by the way, uh, you'll 
a lot of people are very cynical about it. But Wikipedia is at least as reliable as most books. It's illogical to say that books are better sources. Wikipedia polices the assertions made on its pages. Authors are required or requested to include source citations to sources that they used. It's certainly no worse than places online where people store their working papers, their work in progress. In fact, I would argue it's probably better than many. So um, your first instinct in reading a Wikipedia page is to trust it. That's what it should be. Then you just check it. You check what's in there, check the sources, and that verifies it for you in the same way as checking the sources for an article would verify whether the article used those sources appropriately or not. So anyway, I found out a bit more about um, and Freddy doing that. And if I just go back into the article once again, um, and just go through the, the points about it, the key points about it, with a fresh pair of eyes. The, the point about this whole thing is much clearer. Now that I know who Manfredi was, I know he was the son of the Holy Roman Emperor. So his involvement was much more important than I had emphasized, placed the, than where I placed the emphasis yesterday. But in the end of the day, the overall result is the same. I, I, it doesn't affect what my conclusions were about this paper at all. But it just means I know more about the subject. And that's something that you really need to do if you're going to use a source in another um, for another task. That's it.